Hey everyone, Joshua Nesser, and these are my top 10 favorite trails here in Anza Borrego. We're going to go through a list that's quite unique and some of my favorite trails I've ever done in my life. I'm going to talk about what's great about these trails and reasons to go visit them. So why don't you sit back, enjoy my top 10 favorite trails in Anza Borrego here in Southern California. City at number 10, Fish Creek. Fish Creek is a great, easy trail that a two-wheel drive vehicle can do. It's very beautiful and has a lot of scenic things to this trail, plus a lot of great hiking. There's like things like the dinosaur tracks, the wind caves, elephant knees, and a couple other cool areas that are along the trail, plus like areas like the steps. Now, one of the things I like about this trail is the fact there's a lot of great camping along it. You could camp in the campground, which is right before Split Mountain, or you could head further in the canyon, and preferably outside the canyon on the, on the south side, and then camp, disperse camp back in there. Really cool. You could be away from a lot of people and enjoy the scenery. That's why this trail makes on the list. Sydney at number nine, South Fork Palm Wash. This is an easy trail. It's on the northern side of Anza Borrego. The trail itself takes a 4x4 to get down to, probably just to be safe, but a stock 4x4 can't get to it. Expect to spend one to two hours on the trail. Uh, most of the time you're gonna spend it in the slot canyon itself. What's cool about this trail is the narrow sandstone structures, or the canyon itself, is, is a great hike. You have to be a little bit athletic because there are some ledges and a couple spots you're going to have to climb or crawl or need to get to, but very cool. My favorite part is definitely the sandstone arch right at the very beginning of the trail. Very beautiful. Good spot to stop and have lunch, relax, and enjoy. If you do want to camp on this trail, you can head down to the northern end of the trail, which is at Palm Wash, and right there, there's a big flat area you could do some camping at. It's going to be dispersed camping. You're not going to be close to anything. Awesome spot. So tie up those hiking boots and head over to South Fork Palm Wash and check out the Slot Canyon. Sitting number eight, Canyon Sin Nombre. Canyon Sin Nombre is an easy trail. It takes about an hour to do. Some of the popular places people like to gather is in where the canyon narrows down. And there's also a really cool camping spot just past that area. Many people call this the geologist tour of the geologist canyon because of the different types of rock formations that form this canyon. That's because a fault line actually runs this canyon, bringing up all these different types of rocks. It's a very beautiful drive. Um, that is one of the reasons it's actually made my top 10 is because it's very scenic. The trail is pretty easy to do. A stock four wheel drive can do the trail and it's a lot of fun. One thing I'd like to talk about this trail is the secret camp spot. And it's not that secret, but uh, if you go down this canyon a certain distance, and right as the canyon starts to open up, you'll see a little enclave out to the left. And if you go check that out, it's a narrow little tiny camp spot on the left-hand side. It's uh, no bigger than like three vehicles, four vehicles large in there. And it's a really cool spot. I, I keep saying really cool because it's just that unique of a spot to camp at. I always wanted to camp there. Therefore, that's why it made number eight on my list of top 10 trails in Anza Borrego. Senate so number seven, the Metal Sculptures. The Metal Sculptures is an easy trail and actually has asphalt in between the trails. It takes about one to three hours to do. There's a few spots people you like to gather at. That's the sea serpent and also the dinosaurs. Now, some of the reasons this made my top 10 is because this is an extremely family friendly thing to do. It's in the middle of town, so don't worry about getting lost. You don't have to worry about any issues about if you got stuck or anything like that. And also makes for some great photos, great memories, and it's a ton of fun to pose with the things. Act like they're attacking you, having fun, park your vehicle next to the Jeep, go out to the dinosaurs, act like it's chasing after you. And it's a lot of fun. And then one of the most convenient parts of this trail is it's right in the middle of town. So if you get hungry, I recommend stopping at the Christmas Circle, have lunch. There's a great pizza place there. There's a few other cool little restaurants. And then head back on the trail. Now you could do this whole route in two-wheel drive. There's no need for four-wheel drive. Therefore, everyone can do it, and you can bring your friends with less equipped vehicles. And that's why it's number seven. Coming in at number six, Royal Seco del Diablo. Royal Seco del Diablo is an easy trail and takes about one to two hours to do. Some of the popular gathering spots on this trail is, of course, in the canyons or at Diablo's Tail, which is an extremely narrow slot canyon for vehicles. 
The canyons are very tall, like 200 feet tall, which makes it very scenic, very beautiful. Now I'm going to fall back on when I say how easy this trail is, because this trail is so easy that you can take low ground clearance vehicles like Subarus and other vehicles, maybe RAV4s, out on this trail to take the family out exploring. Of course, never will by yourself, but you can take your friends and family who do have less equipped vehicles and go check out this trail. Now, camping on this trail is one of my favorite areas to camp. There's a spot near the beginning of the trail, near one of the springs, that's up on the bank. It creates a big enough space, probably for like six, seven vehicles. Dispersed camp, of course, but it is a cool spot to camp away from people and can make great memories. So if you're in Anza Borrego, make sure you check out this trail. Sitting at the number five spot, the slot. Now, this is about the destination of the trail. The trail itself is super easy, takes minutes to get down. But the destination itself, it takes about one to two hours to explore, and that's if you're going really, really slow. So the destination itself is a narrow slot canyon with walls up to 200 feet tall and in spots maybe six inches wide. I'm saying like so narrow, sucking in the gut, squeezing through. Now, the thing about this trail is it's sandstone. Um, and I do mean so like thicker sandstone, not the uh, flimsy stuff. So it's not that dangerous. With that said, this is a great trail to take the family because you're going to make lasting memories, great photo opportunities, and the kind of stuff people want to talk about their whole lives. And that is why this made number five. Our next trail, just outside of number three, sitting in the number four spot, Aroa Tapiato. Now this is an easy trail, and you could really spend anywhere between two and three hours on it. You could probably go a lot faster if you skipped most of the mud caves. But the mud caves are where people want to gather and hang out. It is what's cool on this trail. And these mud caves are unique to the world. It's the highest concentration of mud caves in the world, and also has the longest mud caves in the world. Now, I'm going to have to do a little disclaimer here. Do not touch the walls of the mud cave. People do die in these mud caves. It is common. The walls collapse in with minimal amount of effort. Uh, so just if you're exploring them, don't touch the walls. Be safe. Now, these mud caves are awesome. One of them lasts about a quarter mile. That's a quarter mile underground in a soft dirt cave. It's pretty scary, pretty awesome, and a lot of fun. Makes for great memories. I like the kind of memories that will last a lifetime. If you do it, just let people know where you're at. And have fun. Sin number three, Pinion Mountain. Pinion Mountain's an intermediate trail. It takes uh, on average about two to three hours to do. Now, why Pinion Mountain is in my top three and it isn't because of the hiking or scenic views. It's all about the off-roading on this trail. This trail has some of the coolest off-roading in the Anza Brigo Desert. Maybe in the hardest off-roading in the Anza Brigo Desert. There are several different obstacles people like to talk about. One is Heart Attack Hill, which is like a 65 degree downhill, and it gets the nerves rolling. The other spot is the Squeeze, and this is a very narrow spot, barely wider than a JK. And the trick is, you have to stay against the big rock on the right. If you don't, and you do it wrong, you can see what just happened. Now, this is a fun little spot to squeeze through, and makes for some amazing photos. There is a couple other spots on the trail, that are challenging, which is between the squeeze and hard tack hill. And there's a rock garden with a couple of waterfalls, some big rocks you have to go over. Like I said, this trail is all about the off-road experience. And that is why I picked this trail for number three. So let's get on to the next one. Sinnet number two, a trail that few know about, but the few that do love it. That's the Calcite Mine Trail. The trail is an intermediate trail, takes about two to three hours to do. Some of the popular areas that people like to gather, of course, the calcite mine, which is the very, very end of the trail, or you could head over to the South Fork Palm Wash Slot Canyon. Some of the reasons I picked this as my number two spot is because this trail is awesome for exploring. It's a little challenging off-road wise, but the exploring once you're off the trail is top notch. There's a ton of slot canyons for hiking. You get to go see the, the calcite itself around the calcite mines. Check it out. It's a clear rock you can see completely through. Pretty cool. I like to make this trail a night run when I'm in the area because we usually camp on the north side, northeast side of um, Ocotillo area, and this is right there next to it. Very cool place to go to. The trail is a little intermediate, nothing a vehicle, stock vehicle couldn't do. Therefore, a lot of fun. You can drag your friends out with you, have a ton of fun, and make memories that'll last a lifetime. And that's why it's my number two. Sitting at number one, a trail that's on most people's bucket list, Sandstone Canyon. This trail is rated intermediate and takes about two to four hours. Um, this is a place you could spend the full day. Now, some of the popular areas along the trail, of course, are the rock slides, the narrow canyon areas, and some of the slot canyons you could hike on. Some of the reasons this trail made my top ten, in fact, my number one spot, is because of some of the scenic beauty the trail offers. On top of that, it's a good, challenging trail 
meaning that even though most stock vehicles could do it, it's going to take a little bit of work to get through the trail. That just brings the excitement and the fun of this trail. Past that, some of the amazing hiking and exploring on this trail. I like to get out of the vehicle. I like to hike around. I like to see what's going on. You need to check out every nook and cranny of this trail because it just is something out there to explore to never, that you'll never see again. One other fact about this trail is it's constantly changing. Because it's sandstone, every time it rains, the trail changes. Makes it quite fun and unique. So if you're in the area of Van Superrigo, you have to hit this trail. It's a trail that's going to provide memories for lifetimes, and I promise you'll want to keep coming back. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Make sure you comment below, and if you want to watch more videos like this, click on the two videos at the top of the screen. Thank you again for watching.